everyone and welcome back to another Lawn Fawn video. I'm Mindy Egan and in today's video I'm going to show you how I created this adorable critter library. I'm going to start off with some Copic coloring. So here I have some images stamped out using Den Sweet Den and Let's Go Nuts. I stamped these images out in jet black ink from Lawn Fawn onto Lawn Fawn's white cardstock which is Copic friendly. So I'm starting off with the squirrels and I will have the colors I use listed at the very top of the screen. So I used E44, E43, E42, and E41 for both of my squirrels. I did color the lampshade but I didn't end up using it in today's card. So I have a question. I love these little squirrels from Lawn Fawn. They are just the cutest. My dad used to nickname me Squirrel not really sure why. And growing up, uh, which is only about an hour from where I live now, we saw red squirrels and brown squirrels. That was it. And then I moved. I got married. I moved. I'm an hour away from my hometown. And we have white squirrels and black squirrels and gray squirrels and brown squirrels. And I I'm, I'm fascinated because I never saw black squirrels when I was growing up. Now, they're only actually like a few blocks away that I see these black squirrels, but they never for some reason come into my yard. And I think they're just the coolest. They look so cute. They're so unique. And I'm wondering what, what color are your squirrels? I'm like fascinated by squirrels. So uh, let me know. I'm really curious. Do you see a lot of squirrels where you live? We live in town and... Uh, we actually had some like really huge trees our, on our road and the city took them down for whatever reason. So it took a lot of the homes of the squirrels. And now the squirrels from around the yard or from around the street come to our backyard, which has a little little kiddie pool in it. So I'm always watching the squirrels drink the water from the kiddie pool. Uh, just a little fun fact about me. I kind of love squirrels. <laughs> so anyway, back to my coloring. Uh, like I said, I did color the lampshade. I didn't end up using it. Uh, didn't quite fit into my card. And I have multiple stacks of books at the top there that I will be coloring. And I'm going to be using pretty much the same colors throughout the books. I'm just going to be varying which book is what color. Just trying to change it up a little bit, make it look like they're different books. And I didn't do any real shading on any of them. I came in uh, with an E81 for the inside of the book. And then there's a little bar, little stripe on a couple of the books at the top. So I color that with an N4. And then for the rest of them, I'm just going to be using a red, yellow, blue, green. And some of them I did um, off screen color a few more stacks of books. I might have thrown in an orange. I literally was just kind of grabbing some bright colors from my stash. So R29, Y35, YG17, and B04. And like I said, I just kind of rotated the colors. I started with red on top on one of my stacks. This second one, I started with the yellow and then kind of just continued that pattern throughout the rest of the books. Once everything was colored, I took the coordinating dies, lined them up with the images, held them in place with post-it tape and ran those through my die cut machine. And then I'll just put them off on the side for later. Then here I have the brick stencil that I sprayed off screen with some pixie spray, which is a really nice low tack adhesive. And I tap my hand over it just to kind of take away uh, any real harshness of the tack. And then I'm using some paper, ba paper bag cardstock and held that in place with the post-it tape. Now I'm going to take some walnut ink from Lawn Fawn and a foam blending tool, and I'm gonna just put the brick stencil over this entire background. This is going to be my library. I know my library growing up was a brick wall. It was a brick building and still there. They haven't updated it or anything. So I love this brick look. It kind of reminds me of the library in my hometown. And it doesn't have to be a perfect blend. It can be very scattered, so it might indicate their shadows on the wall. After I have that initial layer of color down and remove the stencil and that post-it tape, I started going around the edges with the walnut, but that wasn't dark enough for me. So I'm actually going to come in with some soot and add that around the very edges and bringing it in just a little bit to kind of uh, give that that shadow look and have the highlight be in the middle of my card. I'm not going to be trimming this down at all. 
The sentiments I'll be using for today's card is going to come from the thanks, thanks, thanks stamp set. So I will be using uh, one of those larger print words with some black licorice cardstock. I just loaded that cardstock into my Misty, lined up this thanks, picked it up with the door of the Misty, and then I'm going to prep the cardstock with an anti static powder tool. That'll just help kind of reduce that embossing powder getting all over the place. Then I'll ink up the image with the Lawn Fawn Clear Ink, which is an embossing ink, stamp that down. And to make sure I have a really good impression, because it's kind of hard to tell on black cardstock, at least where I was sitting, I am going to stamp that again. Then I'll take the white embossing powder. I'm going to sprinkle it over my stamped word and I'll tap off any excess. And off screen, I do have my heat gun warming up so that it's really nice and hot when I bring it to my cardstock. If you warm it up ahead of time for I don't know, maybe 15, 20 seconds, and then bring it to the cardstock. That'll help minimize any warping. And it helps just when you don't have a lot of warping going on, it's a lot easier to line up your dies, I think. So here I lined that die up, held it in place with the post to tape, ran that through the die cut machine. And now I'm going to heat emboss a sentiment onto my ink blended cardstock. So I made sure this was really, really dry because you don't want the embossing powder sticking all over your wet background. So just make sure that it's completely dry. And then using my Misty Corners ruler, I lined up that skinnier sentiment, made sure it was straight, inked it up again with the embossing ink, and then I'll sprinkle on the white embossing powder. And this really stands out great against that dark background. And the smaller sentiments on this stamp set are so fun. This one says, I can't say it enough. I decided I wanted to add a little bit more interest to my background. So I'm going to take some perfect pearls, just add a little bit to my glass media mat with a couple drops of water. I'll mix that together with my paintbrush and then I'm just going to flick this over my background, just tapping your paintbrush until you have enough uh, spots on the background to what you prefer. And I do wipe off any excess later on off of my heat embossed sentiment. I used some peacock cardstock for the bottom of my library. So you could consider this carpet, I guess, if your library is carpeted. That's cut to about maybe an inch and a half or so. And I'm also going to use the tape runner to attach my uh, black sentiment here. You could do some foam strips if you wanted behind that, or even die cut multiples out and layer it together if you wanted to have that have some dimension. Now for the books, all of these are getting added with a tape runner and I'm tucking them behind each other. And I'm not going to push down right away just in case I need to do any rearranging. I have some of them uh, kind of scattered in size. So that first one I did really, really tall. And also you'll notice the books at the very bottom of each stack. I wanted those to be a different color. I really wanted this to look like a variety of books throughout. I also made sure when I was adding another stack that the two books next to each other were not the same color or even flipping the direction. Then I can start bringing in my critters. So I have a couple of those sleeping there and then the squirrels just having a heyday on top of the books. Now for all of the critters, I did add small foam squares behind each of them. So I'll remove the backing from those foam squares and add those. So I think this makes just a really fun scene with the mix of critters that we have here. I hope you enjoyed today's video and all the supplies will be listed down below in the video description. Thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you again soon.